I would uh, honor to preside the U.S. Senate earlier this week, and while I was presiding, I got to hear the Republican leader of the Senate talk about uh, different issues. Now, this is a guy that's main goal as minority leader is to make sure that President Obama is not reelected. So he got up and he talked about the unemployment issue and how unemployment was to be concerned about. And I thought to myself, where were you during the Bush administration when we were losing 700,000 jobs a month? And we were losing those jobs because, as Hank Paulson said, who was Secretary of the Treasury under President Bush, it wasn't there wasn't a lack of regulation on Wall Street. It was that there was no regulation on Wall Street. Talked about gas prices. And I said to myself, wouldn't it have been nice uh, a couple weeks earlier if he would have joined with some of the Democrats and took away some of the some of the tax earmarks that go to our five biggest oil companies, some that have been around since 1960. And my God, I think they're on their feet by now, you know? <laughs> but they weren't. And then he talked about the housing industry, and I happen to serve on the banking committee that deals with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And I said to myself, why, why, if you're concerned about housing, why don't we fix that backstop on those 30-year mortgages so our housing market will, will turn back? It was so <laughs> Well, the fact is, and Claire talked about it, when we got elected to the U.S. Senate, we do have a solid record about reforming Wall Street, about ending too big to fail, about reforming the credit card industry so the consumers don't get overtaken by the small print, about, and this is really a novel idea, about paying women an equal amount if they do the same thing as men. <laughs> about a food safety bill that we passed that uh, will uh, not only protect the consumers for contaminated food, but also protect those family farmers that direct market their food to the consumer through, through farm to farm. Not a recovery act, some call it a stimulus bill, but a recovery act that cut our taxes by billions of dollars and put billions of dollars into infrastructure during the time, much needed infrastructure. And about investments in education that we passed, mainly Pell Grants, that helped our kids be able to afford to go to school and raise themselves up on the economic ladder. Unfortunately, now we see what the Republican leader was talking about earlier this week. That's partisanship. What we see is that great political theater, but not a hell of a lot of policy that's passed. Why? Well, we only need to look back as far as a thing called a continuing resolution at the end of the year where we're going to fund the government for, actually, it was more in January, February, fund, fund the government for the year of 2011. We were working hard trying to make this thing work. And the other side of the aisle decided it was more important to penalize women by stripping them of their health care through Planned Parenthood. Really, it is time to put the politics away and start focusing on policy. It isn't the first time that's said here tonight. It's been said many, many times. This country was built by working together. Whether it was in Joplin, Missouri, or the floods here in Missouri, or whether it was my grandparents who came out 100 years ago with only their hands and a few neighbors around that worked together to build communities. Missourians know how to get it done. Montanans know how to get it done. We've got to send a message to Washington, D.C. so Washington, D.C. knows how to get it done. And so that, that crazy kind of legislation that they put up just to kill bills ends. The, the issues that we deal with are complex. They're complex, but they're not issues that we can't handle. The deficit, the debt, quite honestly, uh, we're playing around with something on this debt limit thing that could drive this country back into a severe depression. It's nothing to play with. By the same token, I don't think there's anybody on either side of the aisle, in the U.S. Senate at least, that don't understand that the deficit, the debt is something we need to get our arms around. It's not nuclear physics. It's putting everything on the table and developing a plan in the short term and the long term for our budget so that everybody feels a little bit of pain and nobody feels all pain. On jobs, it's a simple issue of investing in education that will create the foundation for jobs. For our business
business is, it is investing in infrastructure, like roads and bridges and electrical transmission and water systems, but it's also investing in research and development so our, so our companies can stay on the cutting edge, be on the edge of technology and innovation to create their products. And we can do that. We can make those investments and we can reduce that deficit and that debt if we get away from the political showmanship and start working together. And quite frankly, it's got to be done and it's got to be done. You folks from the show me state know exactly what it's like to utilize working together with common sense and we can do it in Washington, D.C. too. Let me, um, let me give you the lay of the land for 2012. You know, there's, uh, there's always talk about this is a watershed election and this is the one that's really, really important. And I will tell you, Claire's up in 2012, I'm up in 2012, and I'm telling you, it's really an important election. <laughs> But what we're going to see in Montana and Missouri is we're going to see a ton of money from out-of-state interest because of the Citizens United case. We're going to see ads that will be on TV. As I tell the folks in Montana, you're not going to want to turn the TV on in the fall of 2012, not because I'm not a really good-looking guy. It's just that you're not going to want to hear these ads. That's over and over and over again. But the fact is, because of Citizens United, it goes contrary to what Claire and I stand for. Transparency. Accountability. These corporations can throw money at these, at, through these third-party groups. We don't know who they are. We don't even know if the money was made in this country. It was, it was earned here because there's no transparency, no accountability. So what do we have to do? Well, Claire and I got to raise more money than we should have to to be able to compete with those out-of-state interests. Those out-of-state interests, by the way, that do what they've done before, let Wall Street do whatever they want, farm our jobs out to other countries, steal away folks' retirement. So what do we have to do? We have to put our best resources to work. And those best resources are the people right here and your friends and neighbors. And how do you do it? Well, you've contributed to being here tonight. But over the next 15, 16, 17 months, however long it is between now and November of 2012, you need to talk to your neighbors. You need to talk to them about what kind of a person the Democrats on the ticket are, particularly Claire McCaskill, what kind of a lady she is, what she stands for, and how well she represents the state of Missouri. You need to write letters to the editors, addressing the, the, addressing the issues that you feel are important, making sure that everybody has the opportunity to get the information out that's so critically important when they go into that voter's booth. You need to step up and call folks, call your friends, your neighbors, your relatives. You know, my mother-in-law is a Republican. She's a great lady. She's with them. And I will tell you that Eve, before the election, she called all her relatives and she's got a slew of them. And it made a difference. And you can make a difference too by calling the folks you know. Because if you do that, Claire McCaskill will win going away in 2012. She'll be able to continue to bring down the Senate. She will continue to empower small business and working families. She will continue to move this country forward in a fiscal responsible way, holding the government accountable all the time. You know, we've heard from some great folks here tonight. I heard from the governor, and he's talking about all the crazy doggone bills we went through. I mean, I've got to tell you, there is a pattern here. We elected a lot of folks in Montana this last cycle to our state legislature, and we had things like this. Spear chucking bills, and the silencers on hunting rifles, and the gold standard. I mean, there's a pattern here. And, and I very, very much appreciate the work the people in Wisconsin did fighting. That's only part of it. Part of it is we got to get the right folks to have the right values in the office. It's going to happen by working together. It's going to happen by holding people accountable. And if we do that, we will make Missouri a better state, Montana a better state, and this country a better country. God bless you. God bless you.